Matt Smith here for 5280 Sports Network. Thanks so much for tuning in. Well, Michigan beats Colorado 45 to 28. A lot to get to, but we'll start here. Colorado with a fantastic start to this ball game. You can't script it much better than it played out. 21-7 after the first quarter. Of course, they get that punt blocked, which would come back and haunt them as special teams all day. Mistake after mistake. And then Colorado gets a response to that. And what was important in seeing that was the Buffs were able to respond to adversity. They got punched in the mouth a little bit, came back, got back up. Sefo throws another touchdown to Devin Ross, his second of the day. The Buffs look like they're in pretty good position. That second quarter starts, and Colorado has a really nice drive going until they get about to the 30. 20 yard line of the Wolverines. They go for a field goal where Diego Gonzalez lines up on the left hash. An area where he had had extreme troubles last season, but we really hadn't seen it much this year. Diego absolutely shanks the kick. Michigan would get the ball back, getting a little bit more momentum, and they would roll in that second quarter outscoring the Buffs 17 to nothing and they would go on after Colorado had that first quarter of that first quarter lead 21-7 to outscore the Buffs 38 to 7. Michigan's special teams unit came to play and there's three facets of a football game and it's coach speak that you have to win all three facets of a football game to win the game and against a top five team in the country I think it's pretty clear that you do. Colorado came out prepared, they showed up to play, and the biggest question heading into this game was, are the Buffs for real? And they came out and proved that they are for real, the most experienced in school history. We talk about it all the time, and it shows. They're a senior-laden team led by a senior quarterback, a four-year starter, which is extremely rare. It's probably the unicorn of college football right now. And they showed up to play, which was extremely impressive to see then, of course, that second quarter, they get blanked. Michigan starts to get to Cepho, hurries him, gets a few sacks on him, and then Cepho starts to rush his passes a little bit, doesn't have as much time in the pocket. The offensive line broke down a little bit there in that second quarter. And an area where Colorado has had trouble in the past is coming out of halftime and applying the adjustments made in the locker room to the field. And credit where credit is due. Short-term memory, Jim Levitt, Mike McIntyre, Brian Lindgren brought the guys back out. They were re-energized. And then second play of that drive, Sefo Lufau takes a brutal hit. You can tell he was really favoring that right leg. Then you're thinking, okay, is he hurt? Are we going through this again? He's been taking a lot of pressure to that point in the game. And then he steps up and throws a 70-yard bomb to Shea Fields against pressure, taking a hit pretty much off of one leg. And then you thought, well, Cepho's okay, but as he walked off the field, you could tell in a ton of pain there. And Colorado was just not the same. Steven Montez would then come into the game as Cepho went to the locker room, later diagnosed with a quote-unquote ankle injury. The extent of that, I do not know. We will find out more soon. I imagine they will have some MRIs and team doctors look at him when they get back to Boulder. Steven Montez comes into the game after having a nice showing last week against Idaho State, the redshirt freshman. He goes 0 for 7, and the Buffs really couldn't get a lot done other than that first drive of his where he hit George Frazier in the hands in the end zone for a 40-yard bomb. Would have been a touchdown for Colorado to take the lead after trailing 31 to 28. And after that, there was just no significant momentum. The offensive line would continue to break down, a lot of pressure on Montez, and a freshman coming into a huge environment like that where you're actually in a close game with the top five team in the country, started to see the rush, got that deer in headlights look a little bit, which is completely understandable. He will grow, and if he is the quarterback moving forward, if for some reason Sefo Lufau cannot play the rest of the season, it's going to be a huge year for him because as a freshman coming in, as a redshirt freshman, first season actually would be playing. He's got a bunch of seniors around him, so if Steven Montez can find a way to get things figured out, if indeed Sefo cannot go the rest of the year, which there is no indication of that, the Buffs are not in 
extreme trouble, whereas they would have been completely the last few years. They were when Cepho went down last year, Jordan Gerke came in, couldn't get the job done. Kate Apse came in at the end of the year, and we saw some good things from him, but it was clear that this team was not the same. And a lot of people are going to talk about the special teams, which they should. Colorado performed terribly. The fact that they were even punting the ball to Jabril Peppers at the end of the game uh, was ridiculous. You have to punt that out of bounds. I don't know why you're going to give a top five player in the country even an opportunity to do something with the football. But the coaching there was not very good. There were a bunch of mistakes that those can be corrected. But the story is Sefo Lufau. And I think that he has been a guy who has been vastly underappreciated by this fan base for a majority of his time as quarterback of the Buffaloes. Part of it is well deserved in the fact that he used to make some pretty bad plays and threw them out of a bunch of games over his career, but this guy is he's one of the toughest people that I've that I know. He is. The guy gets up, he's a warrior. He was limping. He tried to get back onto the field as best as he could. If he could have played, he absolutely would have. And it was the first time that we really saw, uh, at least this season, the Buffs respond to adversity. They did it pretty well. The defense showed up, but after a while, you only get so many opportunities before on the road against a top five program without any support. Your defense eventually lets up, which is what happened when Sefo got hurt. Uh, he's the heart and soul of that football team. And there were a lot of people calling for Steven Montez uh, in the off season, beginning of this year. And I think that now all Buff fans really have an appreciation for what it is that Sefo Lufau does for this team. The Buffs would allow Michigan 213 yards in returns, kickoffs, and punts. It's just not something you can do against a top five program when you're playing so well. The truth of the matter is Colorado was in that football game into the fourth quarter. Even with Steven Montez, numerically they were in. They were only down by 10 for a large part of that fourth quarter. A lot of credit has to go to the defense there. But the question remains, is Cepho okay? And I think that heading into this game, we thought maybe 10 points or less would signal success, of a loss, would signal success for the Buffaloes. And I don't know how you can come out of this game as a Buff fan disappointed in what you saw. Yes, it was disappointing they lost, but we also talked about it in the podcast this week, No Bull, Just Buffs, that you cannot hold this entire season based upon what happened in that game this afternoon. The Buffs have three out of their next five at Oregon, at USC, and at Stanford. Those are tough, tough road games, and they need Sefo Lufau back. Without him, this could be a much different season. This team is more talented than they've been in a long time. They have more experience, and I think it proved today that they're gonna step up and compete, but number one, by far the most important thing is Sefo Lufau getting back and healthy. A few other notes, Diego Gonzalez goes out for the entire year with an Achilles injury. That is brutal. The Buffs place kicker who has been booting the ball this season right out of the end zone, a ton of touchbacks, and not a lot of opportunities to return is now done. And Chris Graham is going to step in and do the kicking for the Buffaloes, which he did not look very good in that uh, game against Idaho State. He had a couple of kick kickoffs, and then he had a field goal, which he missed. The kickoffs didn't even get to the end zone. Um, he can't boot the ball through the end zone, so Colorado's going to have to shore up those issues with their kickoff coverage. What you do like about what you saw from this Buffs team is their defense is really good. This secondary is one of the best in the Pac-12. They did not make the day easy on Wilton Spate. Most of the plays that, that Michigan was able to bust were with Jake Butt, their tight end, seven balls for 87 yards. Uh, and then Devon, Devion Smith, their running back, was a stud today. Only touched the ball 11 times, but he was a horse to bring down. 11 carries for 80, 87 yards and a touchdown. Michigan had their numbers, they had their games, and Jabril Peppers, more than anybody, proved that he may, might be the best two-way player we've seen in a long time in college football. 204 all-purpose yards, nine tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, and a 54-yard punt return to add insult to injury, which again, Colorado should have never kicked him the ball there. You gotta punt that ball out of bounds. It was an impressive day from them, 
Cepho finishes 16 of 25, 246 yards and three touchdowns in just over two quarters of play. A very impressive day for him. He was getting a lot of credit uh, nationwide on Twitter from the Big Ten announcers and from everybody about how well he was playing. And you just hope a kid like that can get back because the Buffs really need him. Uh, we'll get into a lot of this game this week on No Bull, Just Buffs. Make sure you tune into that because you're going to need to know whether or not Sefo Lufau is going to be the quarterback of this team. And if he's not, where do the Buffs go and how do they compete from here on out without their heart and soul? Got a lot of stuff to get to this week. I'm Matt Smith for 5280 Sports Network. Thank you so much for tuning in.